Welcome back to another solo tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how to create assembly, also how to create assembly drawings afterwards, and then also how to import bolts and nuts, which are mostly um, standards and so on. Um, so by looking on the screen, you'll see already um, pre-completed drawings and parts. So this is the first um, part, which is a pin. Uh, you can just individually pause each one and then just draw them. The next one is a pulley. So there's your pulley and the dimensions. Next one would be your base block. So this is just your base or your stand. And then your final part would be just also a small pinion. So how do you actually do a, a assembly? So you just go here by new. You want to create an assembly, you can just double click on it or say OK. You wait for it to load. And then obviously all four of your parts should be listed here on the side. So if it's not listed there, it means either your parts isn't saved on your computer or you haven't opened them. So make sure they saved and open before you go into assembly. Um, so obviously what usually you want to do is you want to use your base stand, your base or your stand to start off your drawing. Because otherwise if you use something else, the, it, it conflicts with the rotation at the end of the day. So you just click on your stand there, just drag it to your screen and just click again and automatically center, centralize it. Then you'll insert another component. Um, so obviously I want to insert the pin first, so not the pulley. So I first want to insert this pin, so this pin slides into there. So what you can actually do is you can just place it anywhere. And then like I always say, all your components. So let's say you have two components that you want to make together or weld together. There's always two or three um, mates that you have attached. It's just because there's an X, Y and Z coordinate for most of these components. Sometimes you can add two, other times you have to add three. So let's look. So you just go your top left. You're looking for mate. After that, you want to say what mate selection. So you, obviously this one, it says, yeah, you can select certain things. It says you can select vertices, you can select faces, you can select edges, you can select planes. So most of the time I like using faces and planes, selecting vertices and edges comes to, it, it's quite tricky selecting them and then getting the rotation and so on what you want at the end of the day. So what I want is I want this component to go into there. So what I'll say is I'll say this small little face here so I can always zoom in. That small little face there, I want to be equal to this face. The reason I want that to be equal is I want this spacing to be facing up. So that pin when it slides in, it slides in there. So I'm going to say it needs to be there, facing up like that. And I say yes. So mate, sometimes it will be the wrong rotation. So you can just flip the mate rotation depending on which one you want. So that's available there and most of the time will be a coincident mate um, if you use surfaces then i just say yes now i'm going to say this face should align with this face this side okay so now, okay, now you can see it's the wrong way around so i'm just going to flip the alignment to the other side so you, it's always you can flip it there you can say yes if you wanted to make that thing a distance you can also make it a distance offset here on the left it says a distance so you can actually offset this face here from this one let's say by 30 or 40 millimeters so that's also possible so now we want to actually align this component in here so there's two ways of doing this sometimes you're lucky and you can select this the face here and you can select this surface here and it will snap to it but that's sometimes so that's if you're very very lucky if it doesn't want to work like that there's other method of doing it. so all you can do is you can go here by your eye you can say view my planes use your planes and then you can actually see that this plane is exactly in the middle of that cylinder so then you just need to know the distance between there and there so you can actually put a distance spacing there so we can actually go back we can open this part and open that part um, we can actually go to the drawing let's rather go to the drawing and it looks like that distance is 25 as you can see so we can go back to the assembly so I'm going to say, mate, use that plane, this side, at a distance offset, or you can select it here on the left. So I'm going to say distance offset, should be an half, so 12.5, there we go, 12.5 distance, because we know the distance, we say okay, and there we go. So the reason how you know this component is fixed now is you actually select this component and you move it around. If it moves it around, it means there's still one mate left. For instance, let's say I delete one of these. Let's say I delete this face and I say delete that one. Yes. And I actually click on this now. As you can see, 
it's not being fully configured so there's still one mate missing okay so in this case it needed three mates sometimes again it will need only two okay so that is also possible so after this insert another component another component let's say the pulley or let's say the pulley with some more part so it's going to be part two so the pulley i want to sit on that cylinder there so we're going to say mate again so what you can do is if you don't want to use the um, planes and it maybe confuses you can always just shut them off so i'm going to say that should go onto that surface you say yes and you will see not always say coin centering just to align the circles center points of the circles to one another you can say yes but now you see it overlaps that um, edge of the pin on the outside so what you can do is you can just say yes here and you can actually click and drag this component to make sure it's more where it's physically better to see what's happening there and you can just say mate again i'm gonna say i want to mate this surface of the pulley to this surface of the pin and i say yes so it's a right alignment as you can see so i know it looks a bit awkward but it's just a quick drop that i made just to give you guys an idea of what's happening so now I look at this one this one i actually inserted two mates so not one but two and if you click on this component can you see it doesn't move but as, as you look closer can you see it has a rotation regarded to it as you can see it looks like it's rotating so it's actually rotating because it has a rotation on it so as you can see you're on the left when you go to your mates so it says coin centric so usually it has the two circles so if you want to lock that rotation you can always just right click on it and say lock rotation you can go closer and you'll see it doesn't rotate anymore and you can always see it by the blue dot that it indicates you can always right click again I'll unlock rotation as well so that's possible so in all most cases you want to pull it to rotate so this one will be on rotation now inserting the last component which is the pin pin part four so this pin will go into here so obviously the one with the nice round fillet will go into will go first into the hole so basically mate again we want this outside surface to align with that inside surface can you see that the round edge is on the other way or on the other side the upper side so we actually want it to be facing down so you can just flip the mate alignment again you can say yes again you can say that face should be equal to that face so it snaps all the way down it takes it as flush and you just say yes so all you can see now is that this pin actually also rotates if you look closer so you actually just want to lock that one's rotation you don't usually want pins to rotate so you just right click on the pin the one that it highlights so you can always just highlight here what you want to see what's happening also the same with your parts if you click on the part it will highlight it blue as you can see there are multiple different parts so that's also a nice thing right click on the pin that you want to lock lock rotation as you can see it turns blue there and that means this thing doesn't rotate and obviously still your pulley will rotate okay and that's basically how to do assembly so always look at three to, to two mates depending on what you use also the other thing is to be reminded of don't use edges edges creates a lot of complexity as well as uh, vertices so try and use surfaces as well as planes usually there's no complexity to it you can use distance offsets and so on and most of the time would be coincident or either coincenting depending on what you use so that's basically how to create assembly so now looking at how to create a drawing so after this you can always just you can say yes rebuild and save the document i'm just going to save it onto my desktop desktop call it assembly one i'm going to say save there we go so now i'm going to create a drawing new i'm going to create a drawing and it always most of the time will you use a3 so it depends on what application you want to use it for so in this case it will be a3 the standard one and basically you just double click on the assembly drag it onto here on the screen and then you place it somewhere and it will automatically insert whatever plane you started on so this will be your front front view as you can say um, this will be your top view and then if you slide to the left that will be your left view and then you can always insert a, maybe a 3d view if you wanted to maybe something like that and you can just right click and then it will add it okay so i've also made a video about this before which goes in a bit to more detail on how to create drawings so you can also look at that one maybe how to edit this and also how to change the scales and so on so i'm not going to go into those ones now so i'm just going to assemble this one or draw this one in a first angle of a graphic projection maybe i'll just make this one 
uh, uh, give some color so it just looks a bit nicer so now what I want to show you guys today is in this component what we're actually going to do is well, but before we start with the drawing I see there's one part missing so I want to actually show you also how to insert nuts and bolts um, so I'm going to go back to the drawing to the assembly I'm going to go back to the assembly so where do you actually get your nuts and bolts from so actually you just go here all the way to your right there's something that says design library open the design library go to toolbox you say yes and you just say add in now so it adds in all these standard nuts and bolts so obviously depending on where you're from if you're from america you'll use inches but if you're from the rest of the world you'll use metric system so nc metric there's bearings bolts and screws nuts o-rings power transmission retaining rings as well as washers so in this case i'm going to use a bolt uh one hexagonal head bolt um so it depends on what's given to you maybe you, you're just going to use a stud um so in my case i'm going to use a hexagonal lead and i'm just going to use the maybe a formed hexagonal lead so it depends also in whatever example which one you use and i'll show you how to choose the different sizes so in this case i'm just going to take the normal first one or let's see what other ones so if you just hover on it it will sort of create this pop-up showing you what's happening so just say maybe i should use just the heavy, heavy hexagonal head so let's use maybe this one it comes with a little washer so you just drag it to your screen you release it and it will pop up with a prompt that's saying what size do you want in this case i know that circle is 16 diameter um, if you look at this drawing maybe let's just go back to this drawing this one yeah so i think it doesn't want to do that now because we it's prompted us something okay so i know it's 16 i'll quickly show you guys so it's going to be an m16 bolt so that's it you can always extend this one to whatever distance you want it to use so that's also possible for you to do that you can also choose the thread length here if you wanted to maybe 55 or 38 or the total length of the of the the, the bolt you can also select here on the left so let's say this one we want to be uh i think 50 is still a bit long so let's say 40 yeah it looks like 40 so let's say 40 and then afterwards you just say yes and it automatically wants you to insert more than one so you can just always press escape and that's it so now what we're going to do is we can actually insert this bolt onto the surface so just by showing you that the size was m16 as you can see that hole i think doesn't there's no dimension here let's just say small dimension so as you can see it's 16 that hole so just go back to the assembly okay assembly drawing as we go so we're just gonna say assembly mate we want this cylinder going to there just again flip the alignment say yes now as you can see it's not it looks like it's perfectly but you can click on it and you can still move it around and it rotates so that's what we don't want so i'm just gonna say mate we want to mate this surface all the way with this surface here let's say yes there you go it's actually attached now and then you can even insert a bolt if you wanted to on the other side so let's say if you want to do that so i'm gonna say yes that's fine so it still rotates as you can see but we can always lock the rotation here and just say lock rotation as well so i'm gonna go design library again i want to insert a bolt now the toolbox and symmetric nuts hexagonal nut let's just use this one of these and again it's a massive nut but we just want the m16 would be fine and we just say yes and we just say yes there as well we don't want we only want one okay again same thing mate that should align with this surface as you can see yes so you can always just go click on it and then just drag it outwards if you wanted to make it a bit easier otherwise it's going to be very difficult seeing the surfaces that you want to see that face should align to this face and you just say yes and then obviously this thing will also rotate as you can see which you don't want and you can always just lock rotation again right click lock rotation and there you go and basically there's your component a fixed stand and then a pulley rotating somewhere so basically that will be this word this will obviously continue onto a bench somewhere so 
that's basically our assembly so now we can always go back to our assembly drawing and then automatically can you see it updates what's happening there so that's a very very nice feature of this so now what i want to show you guys is i actually want to show you in assembly drawing like obviously you know how to import um from the other video how to import the dimensions and so on um in assembly usually just like uh, would like to add the biggest dimension so for instance what is the length all the way from here to all the way maybe there so typically something like that is the dimension that you want so these are the big dimensions usually you want in industry so you just want to know the maximum sizes before you send them to clients to see listen okay this thing will fit in whatever application and so on so now to insert a bill of materials which is a bom or a assembly list so how do you actually do that you just right click on your page you go to uh, annotations uh, sorry not annotations you go to tables and you go to bill of materials you just select bill of materials it says select a drawing which you want to insert them on I'm just going to select the front plane and then you just say yes so obviously you can select multiple things here you want to start at number one um, you want it to be this offset the borders and so you can select multiple things there but just by saying yes it automatically imports a very very nice standard assembly list try and make it nice and neat so it doesn't overlap and it doesn't overlap your drawing so just place it it usually goes on top of your title block here on the right and um, sometimes it's different depending on again companies and so on and then as you can see my parts has just been named part one part two part three part four uh, you can also rearrange those if you really want to depend on which ones you import it first and then our thing is can you see the bolts and the nuts comes with the already standard ratings um, attached length pictures and so on so if you want to add a description you can always add a description you can also add another um, block here uh, maybe a material list or so on um, so you can just double click on this block and maybe Yes, keep link part three should have been the stand so i'm just gonna say stand sorry caps is on just say stand and that's it and basically that's how easy it is to create your bill of materials so that's very important specifically for this and then the other thing is to reference this to your drawing you just right click again you say insert annotations you want to insert balloons so basically you can insert them manually or you can say auto ballooning so it will automatically populate whatever's on your assembly and reference them to a certain number so if you say auto ballooning it automatically populates them and then shows what's happening here so you can also change your characters sizes of your balloons and um, so there's multiple things you can actually do here um, by changing all these things um, so i'm just gonna say yes because i'm fine with how they look like you can rearrange them make them look nice maybe so if you want to move move this one a bit out uh, you can always rearrange them and you'll see it, it will usually snap there's a yellow line that means it snaps to the one as well as the other one so you can rearrange them make them quite nice like that that's your pin that's number six and so basically something like that you can have a look at so basically that's how you create assembly drawing by populating your balloons as well as your parts list um, um, basically that's also the end of this video so in future if you want to go more into detail about assembly drawings you can go look at the other video that i've already posted it goes into a bit more detail um, how to insert section views and so on um, also if you want to insert a section view on assembly it's still the same thing you just say right click on the insert drawing views section view halfway through maybe the center you just say yes and it will automatically exclude components rip features and so on if you want to include certain things if you don't want to just say okay and there it actually populates what's happening there so there's multiple ways of doing this um, in assembly and it's a very very nice program so basically that's it from my side thank you guys for watching and um, if you want you can subscribe or leave a comment for future ideas or videos and then thanks again. Oh, 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 oh,